Welcome to Kittle Questions, where I do my best to answer the most frequently asked questions. Today's question is, how do I edit photos in Kittle? And that is an absolutely fantastic question because I don't think a lot of people realize how advanced our editing is. Now it's no Lightroom, or it's no Photoshop, but you can do all of the basic editing that you need for your photos in Kittle. Let me show you how to do it. So let's hop into Kittle here. I am going to go over to our Photos tab and grab one of our uh, free commercial images to use. Now you could upload your own, for example, I could go over here into my uploads. I could upload this cutout of myself uh, and I could edit this. So to just give you a quick preview, we have this adjustments panel over here where you can see all of our photo adjustments and you can see here I'm already uh, updating the brightness. Now this is a cutout of myself I like to use for thumbnails, but let's go and let's find a different image. So let's go for more of a photographic style. So let's say we want to go for, um, you know, let me just type in national park, okay? And we're going to find a national park that we like or basically kind of a scene that we want. Okay, so this might be a really good example. So here we have this photograph of the redwoods here. Uh, I am going to make this quite large just so that it fills the space, which, by the way, all of the images in that panel are going to be massive. Now, this is already a fantastic image. The photographer that took that, I'm sure, is a master at their craft. But let's say we do just want this to be slightly on the more saturated side of things okay we want that bark or that orangeness to come out well i can keep playing with the saturation slider and now you can see some pieces of the green come through you can see that this one specifically this tree here uh, has come through just a little bit now i could also play with the vibrance slider to emphasize that saturation even more now you can see this green here in the background coming through now let's say that it's a little bit of a gloomy day it's probably a little bit overcast this top left part of the image is a little oversaturated um, but I could increase the brightness to bring up everything or I could just decrease it a little bit and if you'll notice when I start decreasing it it makes the color more rich of this tree bark here now maybe it's a little bit too dark and as you can see if I up the contrast it blows it out it's a little hard to see but since I've lowered the brightness I'm actually gonna lower the contrast just a little bit so that it actually doesn't appear so dark. So already you're kind of getting the sense of how you can edit even your photos, just at least basically here in Kittle, okay? Now let's say uh, we wanna use this as a background. We're gonna put a little bit of text on that. Well, you can actually blur this entire image and we can just bring the slider up to find a space where we want it. Maybe we want it just like incomprehensible to what it is, it would be around 40 or 50%. But if we just want a little slight blur to give the idea that there are trees in the background, maybe with a, a logo on top, maybe you're gonna put a little nature logo on top, then something like that could be cool. Now, maybe we want the sharpness of the image to be even greater. Well, I can take it to the left, and you can see if I take it all the way left, it starts to get really, really kind of grainy. Um, so we don't want that much, but maybe we just want it to be a little bit sharper than it was and like, you know, maybe negative 9% towards the sharpness just kind of increases the detail. So contrast and the blur slider, the opposite direction could help you uh, increase the detail, especially if you have a lot of dark or black in the design kind of helps cut through those shadows. Now, let's say that I don't know, for whatever reason, you want these trees to be a different color. Okay, well you could do that with the hue slider. So if I take the hue slider and I start going to the left, the trees become purple, okay? They just do, that's just how hue works. Now they're super purple, now they're blue, you know, and if I go the opposite direction, you're gonna see the opposite colors. Now you're gonna see orange and green, and then you're gonna go towards the teal, and now it looks like we're on a different planet. Now where this could be kinda cool is if you're playing with one thematic design, maybe you took some product photography, of a box perhaps um, maybe you took like a package for example and the package is pink um, and you want to do a variety of mock-ups with that package well you could use the hue slider to turn that pink package to blue or to green and then now you have three mock-ups instead of one so that's an example of how you can change the hue slider now you can also uh, go up or down within one to two notches to essentially cool the image down or or warm it up that's kind of if you think about it like that we could just have a cool warm slider but the hue can kind of do all of it together 
So somewhere uh, negative two to two could either warm it up or cool it down, depending on what you're wanting to do. Now these two sliders at the bottom uh, are going to be very specific to like a niche. I don't think adding a ton of noise to this design is really, or to this photograph is really going to do us any good. As you can see, I, I up the noise. It does kind of give it a kind of filmography like done with like uh, a Fuji film on a super, super old film camera. You know, if you want that vibe, it could certainly do that for you, okay? Now, you'd have to go to the extreme. So like we could have, we could go around maybe 65 to 70% if you want that kind of retro film style. Um, but just doing a little bit is not gonna get you to where you need to be with a highly detailed image like this is what, I'm, what my point is. So if you want that heavy film style, uh, you need to go towards the, the higher part of the noise. And then Pixelate does exactly what you think it would do. Uh, it starts to pixelate it. I'm going to be honest with you all, and I'm not entirely sure what the use case for pixelate would be, but I'd love to know down in the comments if you all think that that is something that you would do with, with, <laughs> with your imagery to make it pixelated. Um, it's very interesting to me, so let me know. Now, there's one... La there's actually two features left. I'm going to go through remove color and then object shadow. So I mentioned earlier that like this section, this top left section is a little bit overexposed and it's not because of anything, you know, perhaps the photographer did wrong. It's just the weather. You know, sometimes we just fight with the weather. Now I could just remove that color if I wanted to. So I can grab the color tool here. I can go over into like the brightest section of this photo. I can select that color. Now it's selected. And as I start to increase the intensity, that color actually goes away. Now, if I go too far, you can see it started to take it away from the tree. So I'm going to continue to back this off until it's not coming through in the tree. Maybe somewhere around, let's say, there. And what's very interesting now is if I grab the background, and I start changing the background, this is how you could get some like kind of cutout photography, which is very, very interesting. So again, I'll change that to red. And if I grab this, I'll go back down to the intensity slider. As you can see, if I bring it way up, it creates a really crazy, uh, a really crazy aesthetic here. So let me bring it down. You just keep bringing it down, keep bringing it down to what you want. Now, again, uh, you would need to, if we don't want any of that, of course, we can just put this back to how it was. And if you're wanting to just fix exposure, uh, you know, there are other tools, of course, you could do that with. You can continue to fight with the brightness uh, and the contrast to fix that. Sometimes it's just how the photo is done. If you wanted to replace the sky, for example, we could go and find, um, you know, let's say a galaxy. Um, Okay, so this is pretty wicked. So let's say that we're gonna put this like in the back, okay? And then we're gonna reduce, you know, now, now it's kind of like nighttime. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully you guys are getting it. This is a little bit too small of a, an area, but you could imagine like if you had, if I had done this and edited the white sky out of a landscape, then you could put two images together and you could have a completely different landscape and you could do this all within Kittle because all I'm doing is just revealing uh, the, the, the picture that's in the back. You know what I'm saying? So let's say we grab that image and we just keep bumping it up until we get to that kind of sunset-y type thing. So now, you know, the sun sunset is over that ridge or something like that okay so that's a that's another feature that you could play with is the remove color feature that also works for other things again if you if you uh you know upload a um upload an image it'll work for that now the last thing you can do is um actually add shadow to your images so let me just put this somewhere like that and let's say i wanted to add drop shadow to this well i could do that okay and then what's really nice about this is that you can add a lot of blur to it you can even change the offset to be uh, different angles and things like that or you can have no offset we have a couple of presets here already for where the shadow is for example this one has no blur so you can really create some cool uh, aesthetics when you change the color okay so like we could change the color of this drop shadow now of course if i start adding blur 
it blurs it but if i don't it kind of creates a cool little neo brutalism type style thing that you can make for posters and stuff like that so that is a pretty detailed demonstration of how you can edit photos in Kittle. I hope this was really helpful. If it was, let me know down in the comments and also let me know down in the comments what other questions you have so that I can help you become a Kittle master faster. I wanna help you achieve your goals. I wanna help you make more money with design. I want you to succeed in what you're trying to do. And if you have specific questions and how to do things in Kittle, we will make endless videos for how to do that but you need to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton, helps you out so that you can know when more videos are uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.